Welcome, Layla. So nice to speak to you. I know we haven't physically met, but um, I know you have a great track rec record in the ecosystem. So I was wondering um, what what you guys focus on as regards investments. Um, yeah, sure. Well, thanks for having me, Pemo. I'm very excited to be here with you. Um, yeah, so Operator Collective is the venture fund that I started with my partner, Malin Yen. Um, and we really right now, our focus from an investment perspective is on enterprise, business to business, SaaS based software um, that has product market fit and either has or is very quickly about to have repeatable revenue. So that's sort of the way we think about how we invest in companies and what we invest in. Okay. And so how, how are your you guys managing uh, the current investments or your portfolio companies um, with the crisis? Yeah, it's, listen, this is unprecedented. This is really <laughs> a, a, a strange moment in time for all of us. And I think a hard one for so many, um, yeah. so much loss of life and, you know, different things. It's, it's a rough moment for sure. Um, we, we tend to be pretty hands-on with our portfolio companies and, and have fairly close relationships. So we definitely, in the early stages, worked with them and helped them think about um, how their current cash could last them. You know, we, we want everyone to sort of be at, at least an 18-month, hopefully 24-month runway, um, and more is better, just given the fact that we're in a fairly unsteady moment. Um, so, so certainly we've been doing a lot of that. We've been doing a lot of talking about employee wellness, checking in on employees, employee physical and mental health during this time. So spending a lot of time with the leadership teams at our portfolio companies better understanding how they're navigating that and how we might be able to help. Um, but yeah, trying to be as available as possible and, and, and really there and sharing information with our portfolio companies, because there's a lot of different data coming at people. Like for example, um, the, Paycheck Protection Program. That was very confusing in the initial days. It was hard to understand who was eligible, how they were eligible. And we, as a firm, you know, got behind that. We have a, a great, uh, one of our LPs is a former CFO. She helped us think through that. And we sort of gave our portfolio companies some good information and guidance for them to consider as they thought about whether or not to apply. So right. really, Malin and I and, and sort of the whole team at Operator Collective try to think all the time about how we can be most helpful um, to our portfolio companies to sort of help them think through and weather the storm. And are you investing in new companies at the moment or what, what's your we stand are. on that? We are. Oh, um, wow. we, you know, we just closed our fund at the end of last year. Um, it's a $50 million fund. So yeah, we, we still have, uh, we, we still are investing. And in fact, we've had some deals that were introduced to us in the last two months over Zoom, and wow. um, which we closed right in the midst of this crisis. So um, I certainly think that there are different things we're looking at and different things people are considering at this moment. But, um, you know, this crisis has driven all of us into our homes. And, and you and I were talking earlier, even into like a retreat sort of mode. Um, that is really a moment where uh, SaaS software can help facilitate communication amongst businesses and inside the community. So we're seeing a lot of attention inside of our portfolio companies as well as people are looking for solutions to help them connect with their employees better. Right. And um, so what's your um, thoughts about like, you know, what's what the new normal is going to be like? Like what, what are the investments that people are, are going to be um, focused on and what are the ones that are going to drop by the wayside? Yeah, I mean, it's it, again, it's a really hard time to make predictions, right? Yeah, because we're sort of in uncharted really. territory to say the least. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, I do, you know, from I can speak from our perspective, we like unsexy, sort of boring things that solve really complicated problems. So, um, you know, we're very much I built the app exchange at Salesforce, Mallon worked at Cisco for years. She started two companies. So we definitely are operators and, and, and come from that enterprise software background. So when we're looking at things, we're looking at interesting companies that are, you know, coming about a problem in a new way. For example, we recently invested in a company called Cube Software that's building FPNA, so FPNA um, sort of collaboration and, and, and good management software. And that is one we felt very confident in because it's just a place inside companies where there's always a lot of communication going on around FBNA and it's hard to get the detail that you want as an executive. So 
So we're looking for different ways, especially now that we will likely live in a more distributed workforce. I, you know, I Twitter yeah. announced this week that their employees can stay home indefinitely. Uh, I'm on the board of a number of companies um, and we are all talking about what going back to work might look like. Um, and every company has an optionality in their discussion around giving employees the choice, which I think makes a ton of sense. Um, yeah, particularly in that with choice the comes traffic different. the way it is in the Bay yeah. Area. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and yeah. different people have different uh, obstacles in front of them. It's just one yeah. size fits all doesn't work in this type of a situation where yeah. we're in yeah. such a desperate sort of time. So I think also with that flexibility of coming back to work or what even going to work looks like, it's not going to be like we're all hanging out at our cubes and talking, you know, that it's uh, lots of distancing and masks and different protocols. So as we think through that stuff, different types of software solutions will become maybe more important than they had been in the past because yeah. they will become the connective tissue that keeps organizations functioning through this distributed time frame. And um, what do you think about accelerators? Uh, because obviously uh, we're chock-a-block with them on workspaces in the Bay Area. How do you think that's going to um, develop or not? I think that's going to be hard. I, I, you know, I've, I, I've uh, been part of a number of accelerators over my tenure at Salesforce and at different times. Right. In general, those are really hard to run, I, I found, personally. I'm, I'm right. not very successful. I was never very successful at it myself. Um but I do think that I, I don't think people are ready to spend a lot of time with uh, groups of people that they don't know. Um, I certainly don't want to do that right now. I ask yeah. it myself. Um, I'm not interested in going into a large you know, space, especially an enclosed one with a whole bunch of strangers. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't feel like a very smart or prudent thing to do right now from my vantage point. So, uh. you know, I think that those spaces I think there are ways to reimagine using, I think we are all in an interesting moment where we can reimagine how we've been doing things. Some things are, you know, will stay the same, but there, I was talking to Michelle Zaitlin. She's the CEO of Cloudflare. She was on one of our, we do this series every week around, you know, facing challenges right now with senior leaders. And she and her team are thinking about going back to better. Right. So I think for an incubator, an accelerator, any kind of co-locating workspace like that, their business just totally shifted, but I do think there's a way that maybe they could think about how they use the space differently and potentially, you know, let people do videos there and totally clean it, or I don't know, but I do think um, innovation, some some good ideas will be brought forth through innovation in this hard time. Okay. And um, again, I, I know uh, it's so hard to predict and uh, sort of impossible actually, <laughs> but I still keep asking the questions um, because one question does interest me, like, do you think it's all going to go back to normal or do you think there will be a new normal and what would that look like? I think there will be a new normal, like how after 9-11 you couldn't walk to the gate and put your loved one on the airplane anymore yeah. and how, That's you know, then eventually we all have to start taking off our shoes. And so I, I don't, I think there will be a new normal. I think masks will be a lot more prevalent in our society than they have been in the past. I okay. um, I do. I think I, I, a, there are a lot of really cute designer masks all over the place now. I mean, I have one of my friends made them. The number of I think masks will be more normal. Um, I, I wonder about you know shaking hands and hugging people. I'm a pretty you know I have a, a an overly gregarious personality most of the time. I like yeah. hug everyone. I, I, I don't know is that going to keep happening. Um, certainly not until there's a vaccine, probably. But I think. I think it's I think that there will be a new normal. And I think for some people, you know, if you have a compromised immune system, this is a much more challenging equation, you know. Yeah. So yeah. so in that moment, I think it really is somewhat every individual, you know, everyone sort of has to think about the best way to approach this for themselves. And then we as a community need to try to be as, you know, as open and as understanding around that as we possibly can. Right. Okay. Um, so what do you, what should startups expect uh, as regards investment possibilities, like in the next year and the next two years, possibly? I think startups should run very lean. Okay. Like my running philosophy on small companies with some key exceptions is you are either building the company or se you're either building the product or selling the product. So I think that um, startups are going to, you know, that it's it's not the salad days right now. It's definitely time to hunker down. Okay. Really, every company I work with is running their budget. 
right? And looking at ways to save money in different places and how they can stretch what they have and different types of options like that. I do think, you know, VC is a little different than everything else. It tends to lag a bit. There's still a lot of funding going on. Yeah. Um, I know lots of deals I'm seeing all over the place and lots of great deals and awesome companies and interesting ideas. So I do think there's quite a bit of activity still, but you know, theory would say that it will slow down in some time if the economy doesn't begin to recover. Um, right. In that instance, I think that, you know, a prudent, a prudent founding team would be looking for ways to be very frugal right now while still looking at how they can hit growth targets or whatever those readjusted growth targets might be in the sort of face of COVID. But um, this is sort of like post 1990s, like, you know, no more Herman Miller chairs everywhere, sort of time yeah. to like <laughs> buckle down a little bit. And I lived through that. I was one of those big okay. startup, you know, fancy companies and then our stock blew down. So I, I've experienced that myself personally. Okay. It's, a, it's a rough adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. And um, personally, um, what is your, what's the takeaway that you've already got? What's the insight that you've already got for yourself out of this crisis? Wow, it's a great question. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I, I left Salesforce about a year ago, so I've been spending a lot of time just reflecting over the last couple of years um, as I stayed there for 12 years and then, I, and then I left. So I think that reflection has only deepened and continued through this period of time. Um, I, I, you know, I wish that people were coming together more in certain ways and then in other ways I'm beautifully surprised by the way they're acting. So I guess that's just kind of normal. For me personally, you know, remind, remembering how lucky I am all the time. I think that's been something I've been trying to focus on, especially when you see so much pain in the world. So and trying to figure out how I can help. Yeah. Um, good to have gratitude despite all the fear that's around us. Indeed. It's a hard time. It really is. It's a, I've, you know, this is probably the hardest thing I've lived through sort of universally and with kids and aging parents and all these different things. There's a lot of concerns and a lot of, you know, like I hate going grocery shopping. It terrifies me. Me too. It used to be something I enjoyed. And now it's like, (laughs) oh my gosh, I'm like a ninja in and out. Um, Will we survive it? (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it's like guys grocery games as fast as possible. But I just, um, but you know, I, those are interesting shifts. So I guess, you know, my hope is things will feel more comfortable at some point, but I, I worry, you know, I, I worry all the time right now. I think everyone does. And that that's hard. Like I was saying to a friend, I think everyone has a low grade depression right now. It's just a little tough. Mm-hmm. So trying to keep things positive, look for, you know, po- look for positive things in the middle of a hard time. That's what I keep trying to focus on. That's great. Uh, one investor, uh, lady woman said to me that um she found that people weren't thinking um very clearly um do you notice that as well as the low grade depression yeah I think people are concerned in a way that they don't you know there's a concern for everyone's safety yeah um, which I think a lot of other countries in the world have live with a bit more than maybe the United States has up till this point okay um, so, you know, I'm, I'm very much an American. My, you know, so I, I know my orientation is here, but yeah. I think that that, and, you know, scared for your kids and scared yeah. for your parents and scared, you know, for the first time in a little while, not terrified for the planet, which is a nice reprieve on that front, but you know, <laughs> nevertheless, like it's, a it's, it's, it's unsettling, Yes, you know, yeah. and it continues to be unsettling. So I think that that, that causes people to be a little frazzled in their thinking. I, you know, again, I sort of hearken back to compassion. Um, I'm giving people the benefit of the doubt as much as humanly possible right now, just because you don't know what anyone's facing. Yeah, it's true. Well, yeah, everyone's under a lot of pressure and stress. And like you said, grocery shopping's become a nightmare. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I hate it. It's like my husband and I Rochambeau for who has to go, and then the one who has to go is in a bad mood for like a day and a half before they go. We hate it. <laughs> Yeah. Look, absolutely delightful talking to you, Layla, and um, I wish you all the best uh, during this time and hopefully we can circle back and uh, check in um, when we're starting to see what the new normal is. (laughs) Indeed, Pamela. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. Pleasure. Take care. See you. Bye.